I go for refuge and to the enlightened, to the Buddha, the Dharma, the Sangha, by my accumulations to the practice of giving and so forth, may I become a Buddha to benefit all sentient beings. I go for refuge and to the enlightened, to the Buddha, the Dharma, the Sangha, by my accumulations to the practice of giving and so forth, may I become a Buddha to benefit all sentient beings. I go for refuge and to the enlightened, to the <coughs> By my accumulations of the practice of giving and so forth, may I become a Buddha to benefit all sentient beings. Sangya Choda Sogi Chonam Na Chanju Bardo Dami Kapsuch Nagi Jin Sogi Vesonam Gi Toda Benjir Sangya Du Bareisho Sangya Choda Sogi Chonam Na Chanju Bardo Dami Kapsuch all phenomena arise from causes. The causes are taught by the Tathagata. The cessation of causes as well is taught by the great seer. Page 7. The top, the top mantra. <coughs> Om ye dharma hetu prabhava hetum te shantatha kato yavatat te shanchayo beings, particularly the deprived and the destitute. They are all with us and you are leading this and all those bodhisattvas, they are to bless us, to inspire us. <laughs> Okay, 
page 19. It was it was my training. <clears throat> With the determination to achieve the highest aim for the benefit of all sentient beings, we surpass as even the wish fulfilling gem and hold them dear at all times. Whenever I interact with someone, may I view myself as the lowest among all, and from the very depths of my heart, respectful of all others as superior. In all my deeds, may I probe into my mind, and as soon as mental and emotional afflictions arise, as they endanger myself and others, may I prevent them and avert them. When I see beings of an unpleasant character, oppressed by strong negativity and suffering, may I hold them dear, for they are rare to find, as if I have discovered a jewel treasure. When others out of jealousy treat me wrongly with abuse, slander, and scorn, may I take upon myself the defeat and offer to others the victory. When someone whom I have helped or on whom I have placed great hopes mistreats me in extreme full, hurtful ways, may I regard him still as my precious teacher. In brief, may I offer and benefit and joy to all my mothers, both directly and indirectly, may I quietly take upon myself all the hurts and pains of my mothers. May all these remain undefiled by the stains of the eight mundane concerns, and may I, recognizing all things as illusions, the word of clinging be released from bondage. From my two collections, vast the space that I have amassed from working with effort at this practice for a great length of time, may I become the chief leading Buddha for all those whose minds wisdom is planted by ignorance. <coughs> Now 207, then going to 08. <laughs> okay. Um, so, uh, what we were discussing the last time is that the that um, say our happiness, the pains that we go through, experiences that we go through. They are caused by what? They are caused by what? And we say that these are caused by the external factors. And who create, who cause the external factors? So, um, these explorations led to many, led to the birth of many of the philosophical traditions, like believing in the external agent, the time as the external agent, which is responsible for creating all the phenomena, one. Another one is the, the say the particles as a final the embodiment of the existence of all phenomena. So these particles, they are the final create the the entities which create the entire universe. So like that, there's so many philosophical positions which took birth in India. And the only when we explore to into these questions then we see that is the wonder of India being such a great land which gave birth, birth to all these philosophical, sophisticated philosophical positions or the uh, traditions. So 207, since it exists, functional things are seen to start and stop. It is governed by other factors, thus it is also an effect. So time, since it exists, referring to time, so the time uh, this is the position of the opponents who believe that the time is one which is so powerful. In fact, recently when I was in Israel, when I was in Israel, and next to the, the, the room where I was put up, next to that, there was, um, I think, a cactus plant. A cactus plant. And how long does the cactus plant grow? 
just you won't believe that you may wonder whether it is actually growing and yet knowing the pace at which they grow so slow and then it has all these buds what do you call it the leaves and then added to this added to this added to this just looking at it tells me how much time it had taken it's like a huge tree with all these one after the other, one after the other, one after the other, like this. And uh, from there, oh, oh, the time is so powerful, the time. So there, the feeling that time is the one which dictates all phenomena. Oftentimes we speak about, say when problems are there, time will heal. So we get a very strong feeling that indeed time is the one which dictates, which creates all of the phenomena. Okay. So it says it says that now it is our responsibility. I say let us say that um, let us say that okay I shared this with the class here as well. Um, last year when I was in Singapore somebody the somebody came to see me and I think he introduced himself as some professor, professor, and um, he came up with just two, per, you know, two people meet him for the first time, and just in few minutes he started. With, he came up with a debate, direct debate. So he said that um, he said that. Okay, um, and he's really learned it. He read, he's really read. Um, he's well read, in particularly the Bali tradition of Buddhism. <coughs> and he said one day, he said that um, you claim yourself to be a Buddhist. I said, yes. Imagine if you're not born in a Buddhist family, do you still think that you're going to be a Buddhist? He said, this is a question. So I told him that this question, this question itself is so precious. Your question itself is very precious. This is a question, of course, skillfully, you should ask everyone. 99% of the people, they follow their own tradition, not because they see value and meaning in it. They're born in that family. Born in a Muslim family, one becomes a Muslim. Born in a Buddhist family, you become a Buddhist. Born in a Hindu family, you become a Hindu. Born in a Christian family, Jain family, Parsi, you become Parsi, Jain, Hindu, Muslim, Christian, Jew. Very true. That's very true. Because of this, then the problems arise in the world. Then the, you don't know the tradition well. You don't know the tradition well, and because of which, then the fanaticism, religious fundamentalism, they all arise out of that. So this is a very good question. And I told him, I personally, it's not that I'm so, I'm so intelligent, so I just thought that Buddhism is the best. No, I was also born like this, as a Buddhist. As a Buddhist. And luckily, because I confronted with a very serious question in my life, not just a hypothetical question, serious life question challenged my life. So that made me to prove, and I see that this tradition indeed has something to offer to me. It is not necessary, this is the best. To be very honest, it should not be the case that this is the best. For tuberculosis medicine is best for someone who is suffering from tuberculosis, not for someone who is suffering from cancer. So everyone has one, one's own taste. One's own taste, one, one, one's own requirement. So for some people, say they believe in God. This is extremely powerful, very helpful, very helpful. And that makes the person to be very compassionate, very caring, loving. This is, the, this is what is required, finally. Belief in karma, again, makes you believe, makes you to drive very compassionately and sensibly and wisely and so forth. So all these philosophical traditions that are meant to make us a better human being, a 
the more compassionate person. So as long as that happens, that is the, the, that's the purpose. So now, at the same time, at the same time, see what makes sense to us. What makes sense to us. And then accordingly we go. We go like this. And then see how to make yourself a happier person and make your family members a happy person. And amongst the family, if you believe, if you start to sense that this text is so meaningful, but don't impose this text on others. Don't impose this text on anyone else. So we can convey what is said there according to the temperament, according to the propensities, according to how much we can say. That much we share. And then if the person has a very strong feeling in the, the views of others, and meanwhile helping the person, let them continue with that. So that's the purpose. Okay. Um, so with this 207, since it exists, the time exists, functional things are seen to start and stop. Same, the time. The opponents believe that the time is the one which creates everything. And it's a time which dictates. Time is a cause, cause of factor for all other things to exist. Functional things are seen to start and stop. Same. I think 207 we finished last time. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Okay. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, are seen to start and stop. It is governed by other factors. Thus, it is also an effect. Same. We speak about time. Time. Okay. Is there anyone who can explain to us what is time? Anyone? Before we go into say whether it, this is the final embodiment, the creator of fault phenomena. Now, before we discuss on this, anyone who can explain what time is? Anyone? Yes. A perceived gap between two events. Passive gap, uh, not the not physical gap. It's a temporal gap. Right? A perceived temporal gap between two events. Meaning, say you plant a seed and then after a few days then the shoot grows. Growing the shoot and planting the seed. So these two are not simultaneous. If these two are not simultaneous there is a gap. So that gap is the time. Okay. Good. Anyone else? Huh? Uh, measurement of uh, some happenings. Measurement of? A uh, measurement of some happenings. Exactly. Happenings. Happenings means something start, begin, and end. There's happening there. Okay. Anyone over there? Okay. Well, the time is the fourth dimension. Three dimension is breadth, length, and height. Three dimension. This is the space. Space has three dimension. Then plus the time is the fourth dimension. Fourth dimension, which creates okay, which creates all the three dimensions. Space is created by time. Okay. Exactly. If we remove the space, then there's no concept of time also. So time is created by space. Okay. Okay, so the idea is that time is seen as the creator from your point of view, as the creator of the three dimensions space, is not in the sense that time precedes and the space follows. This is not the king. These two are simultaneous. Very good. Uh, I was just gonna say uh, um, it's a non associated composition of time. No, no. Say time is a phenomena. Time is existent. That's fine, but how would you define it? Give the meaning of this. So it's, a, it's something of a concept based on what Padviji said between the two events, either on the form side or the mental side. Okay, the two events, two events associated with the physical three dimension, physical form, or non-dimensional. A mental form, mental, right? So, the. Would it be correct to say it's a non-associated composition? Uh, yes, 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 yes. Okay. Now, with this, um, let's say time is, in fact, um, 
time becomes like a property, becomes like a property of a material thing such as the, the matter, the, the property of a matter or a property of a mind. So if you seriously think about what exists in the universe, if you seriously think of what exists in this universe, we see what? Anyone? In your life, have you ever encountered something? All right. Like what? Say so this morning you had breakfast. So breakfast is external matter, right? And what else? And you took a shower. So the water that you use is external, and the body which has been cleansed was external is the matter, right? And the what? And you you might have done a little bit of prayers. So that is done by your mind. Someone is pure verbal prayers without mind involved. Right? When you have, when one is very busy, then mind is busy somewhere else, and the, the, the mouth is actively even into prayers. Right? Whereas some, uh, when one is involved, when one is engaged, then the, the mind gets involved. Right? So we see that in this world, whatever we engage in, we engage either with the physical material things or the mind, mental. You're getting it? Okay, these are things that we have to explore. What I'm saying with great confidence is that when we enter, when we interact with the world, when we interact with the world, <coughs> either it is material thing, matter, or it's metal. Can you imagine anything else which is not any of these two? Anyone? When, you, when your mind interacts, you can bring anything, philosophy, anything, tell me. Somehow they are connected with either physical matter or mind. Can you think of anything? Yes, Joy. Other people. People, yes. Exactly. Okay, okay. So say another person, let's say. Another person. Person is not a matter, is not a mind, is something else. It's not a matter. For sure it's not a matter. Right? For sure it's not a mind. It is composed of mind, it is composed of matter. You're getting it? So therefore, although, although the object with which we interact, the person as the object, is not a matter, it's not a mind, but it's composed of matter and composed of mind. You're getting it? So we see, still we see that this has something to do with the matter and the mind. So anything else? Huh? Traffic rules. Traffic rules, so they're associated with the traffic. And the traffic is matter or what? No, just the rules. No, I'm saying. Traffic rules are associated. I'm not saying that what you are interacting with is matter or is mind. This is not what I said. What I said was that whatever we interact with, somehow they're connected with the matter or matter. Right? So the traffic rules is connected with. Traffic rules, there's no traffic rules that are hanging in the air. It is with the, the traffic there, and then our mind imposes impose the our mind impose that this is how you should drive. Right, left lane, right lane, you stop at the right light, and then with the green you can go. All these rules are set. But these rules there are no separate rules outside the air. Outside the external matter and our thinking. Right? So again, we see that is with the matter and the mind. This is so important. So these explorations, and finally, with these explorations, I'm looking for um, the exhaustive, exhaustive list, right? What we are looking at, we in fact somehow connected with either matter or with the mental. This is amazing. This is this someone is amazing. That's very true. It's very true. Say we think about, say we think about, say we think about emptiness. Emptiness is not a matter, it's not a mind, right? Emptiness, let's say, a meditative emptiness, right? Meditative emptiness. So when you speak about a meditative emptiness, so this emptiness, emptiness of what? Emptiness of what? Emptiness of person. Person also not matter, it's not matter. But emptiness of the person, the person is associated with the matter and the mind. The person per se is not matter, is per se is not mind. 
but, it, but it's associated with matter and with the, the matter, right? So we see that somehow everything is connected with the matter and mantle, matter and mind, matter and mantle. Now time. Time is the characteristic directly associated with the matter and the mantle. Because the matter changes, the mind changes, the time, the concept of time came into being. Because change means something which does not remain static. The first moment, it does not remain static, it changes to the second moment. First moment and second moment, these two are not identical. And these two are not simultaneous. Because these two are not simultaneous, there is a gap. This gap, there is no separate gap outside. You, from the object, you take it out. There's, we can't take it out. It's just a characteristic of the object. So therefore, the time is the gap between the two events. Two events which are associated with impermanent phenomena. And impermanent phenomena somehow can boil down. Somehow can be boiled down to matter and mental. And a person is the impermanent phenomena. So this person is impermanent phenomena, but is associated. It's not matter, it's not mental, but it's associated with the matter and mental. Likewise, impermanence per se. Impermanence per se. Impermanence of what? Impermanence of the person, impermanence of the flower, impermanence of the house, impermanence of the whole world. Impermanence. So we see that again they are somehow connected with the matter and mental. Right? Okay. So time is a concept associated with the physical, associated with things which are composed of either material parts or mental segments, temporal segments. Since it exists, functional things are seen to start and stop. Functional things are seen to start and stop. It is governed by other factors, that is all, thus it is also an effect. So let's say the time, the, the first moment of the, say 2016, 2017, 2018. Say 2016 is gone. 2016 stopped. 2017 is in the process. Then 2018 is yet to come, right? Say the time associated with 2016 is stopped. To time associated with 2017 has started. Okay, so it says since it exists, functional things are seen to start and stop. Say the functional thing such as the year 2016 stopped. 2017 has started. It is governed by other factors. Say, now 2017. 2017 comes into being by dependence on 2016. So even this 2017, the time, that is also causally dependent. It is dependent on the 2016 as the factor. And 2017, 2017 is nothing but is composed of the matters and of matter. And the matters, they come into being but depend on so many other things. For example, our body. Our body is the matter, 2017 body. Which is younger? 2017 body is younger or 2016 body was younger? 16 was younger. So it was not static, it changed. So this body, 2007 body, this came into being by came into being by dependence on so many other factors like food, like the, say, the, the weather condition, and uh, the water, so all these external factors, but it depends on these, and also time factor, and then the 2017 body comes with being. So, um, our scene to start and stop, it is governed by other factors, which means that even 2017 as time, 2017 as time, that is also governed by other factors. So therefore, 2017 per se, 2017 as time, is not the ultimate creator of the universe. So you go like this, 2017, 2016 likewise, 2015, you go back 15 billion years ago, 15 billion years, let's say, billions years ago, ago, what the scientists believed to have uh, as the point of the Big Bang, uh, the time, big explosion. So there, we go up to this point, up to this point. So 
wherever in time you just pick up one time, we see that this is created by the previous moment of the time, the previous moment of the factors. So we see even time is not something which is the absolute creator of all phenomena. It's governed by other factors, thus it is also an effect. So 2017, just as this is responsible for creating 2018, but this is effect with respect to 2016. To, uh, 208, any cause without an effect has no existence as a cause. Any cause without an effect has no existence as a cause. Therefore, it follows that cause must be effect. So, say the cause. Cause, okay. Um, cause and effect, these two are mutually dependent. Mutually dependent. From the logic which we are studying, okay, again, just as the psychology which we studied, Buddhist psychology, um, the tradition, the philosophical tradition um, we based on is this Sautandrika school, by, by the Buddhist psychology, right? Likewise, the Buddhist logic is also according to Sautandrika school, Buddhist logic, particularly the concepts, particularly the concepts, the content, quantum matter, there should be some content, because the psychology is mainly by Arya Sangha and Acharya Vazubandhu, right? So Acharya Ar 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 Sangha, while he, while he was a Madhyamika philosopher himself, but his main contributions were in Chetamantra philosophical um, the concepts. And Acharya Vazubandhu, we cannot be sure what, what was his his own personal philosophical view, but the, the, the legacies that he left, the treatises that he wrote, they were primarily on the, the Chidamatra philosophical view. Now, so therefore, these two, two of them, their contributions um, were mostly in Chidamatra philosophical view, and at the same time, they also have the Sautantra's view. Right? Now, here, watch the Pramana Pratika and Pramana Samucheya. Pramana Samucheya by Acharya Dignaka and Pramana Vartika by Acharya Vasubandhu. So there, um, they say Pramana Vartika by Acharya Dharmakirti, chapter 3. Chapter, chapter 3 is exclusively on Chittamantra's philosophy. Chapter 3. And chapter 1 and chapter 2, they are more from the point of view of South Andhra school. Southern school, and particularly for us studying the for us studying the Nalanda Master's course, and studying these the complicated philosophical view, it is very important to know these different views, different views, so that your thinking, our thinking, will become very broad and very flexible, and can go into the nuances very easily, knowing the the more number of the views, then you will see which makes greater sense. And then on that basis, later on, any other views corresponding to um, you know, what you have already studied, when you, uh, when you encounter with these, um, they become very easy for you. Okay, so what we are standing here um, is uh, uh, the main, main the logic. Logic is mainly according to the South Hunter School. In terms of subject matter, in terms of, so this is different. This is purely Madhyamik, particularly Prasangya Madhyamik, right? Okay. Okay, now, um, any, any cause without an effect has no existence as a cause. So, cause and effect. Cause and effect are these two depend, related? Cause and effect, are these two related or not? Accepted? Okay, these two, are, these two are related. Okay, tell me, if these two are related, how are these two related? In what way? So the effects come into being, effects come into being by dependence, dependently related. Effects come into being by dependence on the cause, right? What about the cause come into being by dependence on the effects? No? Yes, no? Okay, now, here comes the philosophic the difference in the philosophical views. Say 
Prasanthi on one hand and all the other schools on the other hand. Right? Prasanthi on the one hand and all the other philosophical schools on the other hand. All the other schools, they take, they take on the relationship between the cause and effect is that the effects, they come into being but dependence on the causes from the, the schools other than Prasangika. Effects depend, um, depend on the causes, not the causes on the effects. Whereas it is only Prasangika who presents the cause and effect, these two are mutually dependent. These two are mutually dependent. How? Let's say, what makes something a cause is only if there's a result. Only if there's a result, then that object becomes a cause. Without the result, then the cause makes no sense. Benefactor, beneficiary, and the actual benefiting, these three things, oftentimes, re re oftentimes referred to as the three spheres. Three spheres. The benefactor, beneficiary, and the act of benefiting. Same, the the goer, the goer, the one who goes, the one who moves, and the destination, and the act of going. So, in other words, agent, object, and the action which connects the two. Agent, object, and the action. So these three are referred to as the three spheres. Three spheres. These two are always mutually connected, mutually dependent. Without the, let's say, without the agent, the action makes no sense. Without the agent, there's no action. Without the agent and the action, then the object makes no sense. Object which receives the, the action. And then, without the object, where are you going to act? So the action makes no sense. Without the action, the actor makes no sense, or the agent makes no sense. Without the benefactor, beneficiary, who's going to be benefited? Beneficiary makes no sense. Without the beneficiary, even if you like to give something, there's no one to give. So therefore you don't become a benefactor. So the benefactor, beneficiary, and the act of benefiting, they are all mutually dependent. So this is um, precisely according to our Prasangika philosophy. Okay, so from this we see that, uh, we see 207, no, 208. Any cause without an effect has no existence as a cause. Therefore, it follows that cause must be effects. So how, how cause must be effect? As we said earlier, 2017. 2017 as the cause, right? Or let's say 2018 is here to come. So let's say 2016 as the cause, uh, give rise to 2017 as the effect. Right? What is today is the result of 2016. Effect. So now, for this cause, 2016, in order to, in order to give rise to 2017, 2017, we see that that 2016, 2016, within 2016, there's one portion which links with 2017 directly. Yes? No? Yes. To, within 2016, December connects with 2017 directly. And January, February, November, uh, January, February till November, they did not connect with 2017 directly. Because after November, again there's December of the same year. So 2017 uh, did not follow directly. So 2000, December of 2016 is the last moment of 2016 that connects to 2017 directly. Which means that within 2016, there was one portion which is directly linked with 2017 and one portion which does not which did not link with the directly linked with 2017 so which means that 2016 within that one portion which links with 2000 directly links with 2017 was the one which was the effect and the which dis, which did not connect with the 2007 directly was the cause cause and effect. So within that again we see that there's a cause and effect. So although 2016 as a whole, as one entity, is treated as the cause for 2017, but within that we see again there cause and effect. So only if this, this nature is intact, 
we can speak of something as a cause. Right? So it says, uh, the causes must be effects. Causes must be effects, meaning within 2016, as 2016 as a cause of 2017, within that there are two parts. The first part is a cause to this second part. Then you go on like this, then we see that whatever is a cause should necessarily be an effect with respect to another phenomenon. 2009. When a cause undergoes a change, it becomes a cause of something else. And anything that undergoes a change should not be called permanent. So say Cause, when a cause, how does a cause give rise to a result? How does a cause give rise to a result? Is when the, only when the cause undergoes a change. You're getting it? This is very important. Only when the cause undergoes a change, then it can give rise to a result. For example, the seed and the, the seed and the sapling, seed and the shoot. Say, you plant the seed and the seed disintegrates and the shoot arises. So when the shoot arises, the seed is gone. The seed is no more there. If the seed remains a seed for good, then there's no time for the shoot to arise. So for, for a result to come into being, the cause must come to a stop or disintegrate. When a cause undergoes change, it becomes a cause. Only then it becomes a cause for something else. Anything that undergoes change should not be called permanent, which means time who believes that time is permanent and it is a cause of all other things, that the time as a permanent, if it is a cause, when, the result, when it gives rise to the effect, it should disintegrate. If it disintegrates, it cannot be permanent. What is the meaning of cause here? Cause here is um, the factor which gives rise to, gives rise to another object. Yeah. Okay. If something, if something undergoes change, then it cannot be permanent. Now the, 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 the logicians. If something, because what it says, anything that undergoes change should not be called permanent. Is it true? If you don't accept, then you are, you are trying to reject Aradev, right? Okay. Say, if something undergoes change, then it uh, should not be called permanent. Okay. What about, let's say, the sound of a clamp, is it permanent or impermanent? <coughs> sound of a clamp, is it permanent or impermanent? Impermanent. Okay, again it's very strange. There are some philosophical schools who believe that sound is permanent. It's amazing. So, don't reject them very easily. Don't reject them easily, oh, because this is not what I follow, this, it makes no sense. No. What makes them to say that, say, come with these philosophical views is so profound. So they say the sound is permanent. I remember my teacher, in fact, most of you have received teaching from Venerable Gishi Shitakir Rupeshe. How many of you received the teachings from Venerable Gishi Shitakir Rupeshe? Okay, most of us here. He is such a you won't believe in the monastic universities, monastic universities, but in his class in Tibet, that was back in before 1959, in his class when he was still very young, he was so sharp, so sharp in logic, nobody could debate, compete with him. And so, so particularly when during intermonastic debates, intermonastic debates, say, um, with the debates, usually we need two things. One is the skill in the sharpness, sharpness and the equity, the fastness, the sharpness, the fastness, and the 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 dexter, the quality of the, the being dexterous. Another is that you should have a fast, incredible memorization. If you have these two things, then nobody can outshine you. So, during the monastic, inter-monastic debates, Venerable Geshe Stavgir Rupeshe, when he was still very young, maybe he was in his same twenties, he was known for his sharpness. And there was another monk in his same class, known for the vastness of the memorization. So when these two monks, they stand up to compete with the monks from the other monasteries, 
Then they said, that nobody can challenge the truth. <laughs> this was his fame. So now, um, in Varanasi, and we had the honor of receiving teachings from him uh, two times here. Okay, so, um, so now, um, say the, how these philosophical views, they come into being. The, the time as the permanent. Um, once, once when he was giving teaching on the Pramanavartika, chapter 2, I remember that very clearly that what he was teaching even about the non-philosophical view, no, non-Buddhist philosophical views. He was explaining that like a, a very ardent follower of the, that bit of philosophy with his own experience. He would just, I remember very clearly that he gestured like this. The sound is permanent, look. Some came, sound just came from nowhere. It's already there. What you do is that your two fingers just, just snap and then the sound is taken out of that. Right? And the sound which was non-visible, invisible, it, it was made visible to you. Simply, this is not a sound. This is not a sound. Right? The thumb is not a sound. The middle finger is not a sound. Simply, you do the gesture and this act is the factor to make the invisible sound become visible. It's already sound is already there. So it's already there means it is eternal. It's eternal. That is permanent. Right? Okay. So now with this, what about the sound? Permanent or impermanent? It's impermanent. Let's say okay. Staunch Buddhist philosophers. Say impermanent. And then what it says here is that anything that undergoes change should not be called permanent, right? Okay, now let's say, sound of clam, let's say this is impermanent. How, how long does it last? It lasts very brief, let's say. Let's say a fraction of a second. Now, this sound of a clam, why that is impermanent? But it has so many characteristics, yes, no? The sound of clap, unpleasant sound. Or let's say, a loud sound. All these characteristics are there. Impermanence of the sound. There's so many characteristics. And one of which is, that the sound is, that the sound is, empty of, uh, say, this sound is empty of being a, say, the, the uh, same word. Atoms, right? Visual, empty of being, empty of being visual, empty of being visual. So this is also one of the characteristics. So this this sound, being empty of a visual quality, of a visual quality, being empty of visual quality, is this permanent or impermanent? Okay. Same. When the object, the sound, when the object disappears, all the characteristics of the object also should disappear. You agree with me or not? Say, this biscuit, when somebody eats this biscuit, the biscuit disappears. As the biscuit disappears, all the characteristics, characteristics of this biscuit should also disappear at the same time. Yes, no? Okay. Right? Now, let's say that as the sound arises and, dis it, and disappears, likewise, if this sound lasts for, say, one millisecond, then all the characteristics of this sound should also last for one millisecond. You getting it? So just as this sound is so momentary, so momentary, all the millions of characteristics of this sound as well should be momentary. Momentary. Yes, no? Yes, no? Yes, the question here? Okay, let's say disappear as a sound, as an audible sound, right? So that all other, the all other possibilities are ruled out. Okay, say the sound as the audible sound disappears. All the characteristics of the audible sound should disappear. Yes, no? Yes. 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 Now, 
If the duration of the audible sound is one millisecond, the duration of all the other characteristics of the audible sound should also be one millisecond. You agree with me or not? Yes. 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 No. How no? Vibration is not the audible sound. We are talking about the audible sound. Right? Say this glass may be easier. This glass is a beautiful glass. Beautiful glass. And I, I what? It slips from my hand and then it breaks. The moment this beautiful glass breaks, right? And the glass, I grab at it and it falls and breaks if it takes like one second duration mm -hmm. just as the glass from the from the the time of picking up with my hand and slipping and then breaking falling and breaking it takes one one second that's a one second then the, the characteristics of this beautiful all the characteristics of this beautiful glass should also disappear in one second yes no yes. okay if the answer is yes, one second, how long is it? Is it permanent or is it very brief? Very brief, it's not permanent. That permanent has to not do with eternal or non-eternal. It's not the length of time, yeah. whether it is momentary changing or not. Okay, so therefore this, this, say, just as this glass is impermanent because it lasts very brief. Like was all the characteristics of the glass should also be impermanent because they're also very brief. Agree? Not agree. Angitla was very unhappy. He was just, yeah, very rigorously, yeah, the, 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 the putting his hand up. Okay, yes. Say it again, say it again. So the glass is not impermanent. Just because not impermanent, permanent. No, no, I'm just saying we glass is impermanent, but it okay. is not. Okay, okay, okay. It is we are not saying that it is impermanent. Because it lasted for one second. No, no, you are a real magician. I got lost. So you are putting two, two negations. Say it so again. The glasses. You said that because glass lasted for one second and the characteristics, they lasted for one second. So they should both be impermanent. So I am saying that glass, it is impermanent. Because while it lasted for one second, it was changing within that second momentary. It has momentariness. So that is why it is impermanent. Not because it lasted for one second. So what about the characteristics? Characteristics, where the glass lasted for one second, those characteristics, they also lasted for one second, but they were not changing within that one second. So they Why are not? Because uh, for to undergo change, you need to have some substance. Uh, so this so is a glass there? Glass has substance, so glass is undergoing change. No, even the time, the, even the... So the characteristic... The char all the, the characteristics, they also have a substance there, it's the glass. Not we're talking about the emptiness of the object. Yes, exactly. So, and say, so let's say the emptiness of the glass. Emptiness of the glass also has the glass as a substance, which is undergoing change. So emptiness of the glass is a characteristic of the glass. Emptiness itself does not have a substance. It, it's, a, it's, 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 a, it's an absence. Uh, emptiness is an absence of objective existence of the glass. So being in uh, an absence, there is no uh, substance there. How, how not? The glass is substance, right? Glass. Emptiness is not glass. It emptiness is of the glass is not glass, but emptiness of glass has the glass as a substance. Without the glass as a substance, it, it cannot be its characteristic. Yes, it is dependent on glass, but it is not causally dependent on glass. How, how not? Even the glass is not causally dependent on glass, right? No. Glass is dependent. Present moment of glass is causally dependent on the previous moment of the glass. Likewise, the emptiness of the present moment of the glass is dependent on the present moment of the glass. 
Not dependent? Is dependent. Is dependent on the class. No, is is dependent on the previous moment of the class. No, yes, no. Emptiness of present moment of the class. Emptiness of present moment of the class is dependent on the previous moment of the class. No. Huh? No. May not be causally dependent, but dependent. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay, so the, in fact, did you follow the, the did you follow what Angirji is saying? Yes. In fact, what Angirji is saying is that the glass and the characteristics of the glass, particularly characteristics, there are so many characteristics, one of which is the absence of objective existence. When we break the glass, all the, all the characteristics, just as the glass disappears, all the characteristics of the glass also, dis also disappear. Now, amongst the characteristics which disappear, um, one of which is the the absence or the emptiness of the glass, emptiness of glass, and the duration of the glass and the duration of the emptiness of glass, these two are the same. But simply because the duration is so short, doesn't mean that it is it is impermanent. Impermanence has a connotation, something which is a substance which undergoes change. So the glass, there's the substance there, but the abs emptiness of the glass, absence of objective existence of the glass, does not have a substance to undergo change, right? So uh, therefore, it is not impermanent. Also, duration-wise, although it is very short, but it's not impermanent, right? Okay. So the, yes, Padriji. When the glass breaks, uh, certain qualities of the glass may continue. Right? Like what? Transparency, the molecular structure of uh, the material of the okay, glass. Okay, let's say this glass breaks into two pieces, let's say. It breaks into two pieces. So the first piece is also transparent. Second piece is also transparent. So these, this transparency is the or was the characteristic of the previous glass before breaking. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it sustains the, the quality of the transparency even after the breakage. That's true, but that transparency of the broken pieces are not the characteristics of the glass. It, this has become the characteristic of the broken pieces. Right? Okay. Okay, so it's it's like this. Say, say, a body has the uh, the tactility. So the tactility is our can my my body's tactility is my characteristic. Yes, no, right. So when I die, body disintegrates. So the quality of the tactility continues. Agree? Like the transparency continues. Now, if we say that this transparency is the characteristic of the glass, then you will end up with numerous contradictions. We have to say that when we die, the quality of the tactility of a body should continue. If you say, so what? It continues. Then it will go into the dust, earth. And the apples will absorb that in the form of nutrient. So now that has become the quality of tactility of the apple. It's not the quality of tactility of the origin. Right? So as the object transforms, the quality which is passed down does not remain the quality of the earlier object. It becomes quality of the then object. Right? Okay. Yes. Uncommon features like? Uh, like uh, the smell, of, like the touch of the glass or the color of the glass. What's the common? The emptiness of the... Emptiness of glass. Yes. And that the Why the emptiness of glass is common? Because, I was trying to clarify this. Anyway, from what we have studied in Lorik, I wanted to know that it, 
what I understand is the uncommon features of R, the impermanent features, and they are specific to that particular uh, object or that particular phenomena. And the uh, common features are, let's say, permanent. I don't know if this is right. Or okay, let's say and what the Tejal is saying makes sense. Let's say, say, dependent origination. Dependent origination is holds true for permanent phenomena or impermanent phenomena? Both. Both, which means this is the characteristic are common to all phenomena. Impermanence. Impermanence is it common to the impermanent and permanent both? No, this is something unique to the composite phenomena, not to the non-composite phenomena. Whereas dependent origination is a common feature to all phenomena. Now, impermanence, is it applicable only to the boys and not to the girls? No? <laughs> Both. So within the composite phenomena, impermanence is a common feature. Common feature. You're getting it? Whereas, whereas, say the say the, 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 the being a human being being a human being is something unique to the human beings and not to the other composite phenomena so this is something unique this is known as self characteristics self character characterized phenomena and the generally characterized phenomena they are two things right even that is also contextual even that is also contextual say the glass the tactility of the glass is a general phenomenon, is a general characteristic with respect to all the glasses, right? It's a general characteristic with respect to all the glasses, but it is a the specific characteristic with respect to the composite phenomena because it does not pervade all the composite phenomena, right? Now, say that the, okay, so then we see that with the, it's the sound, with the sound, sound of a clam, sound of a clam, we see that impermanence. This is something which pervades not only the sound of a clam, it also pervades to the other composite phenomena. Now, the dependent origination, it pervades even more, that it pervades all phenomena. So that way we see that the phenomena can be characterized into two, the same, the what specifically characterized and specifically characterized phenomenon and and generic so one is the specifically characterized phenomenon and the other one is generally generally characterized phenomenon specific and the the generality there are two so the the same object can be specific as well as general, say it can, but the same cannot be specific as well as general with respect to one object. It should be with respect to two different objects. Say the glass is specific, is specific with respect to the composite phenomena. When you speak about the composite phenomena, glass is very specific. It does not pervade all the glasses, all the all the composite phenomena. When it, when it was the, the glass becomes a general with respect to a, with respect to a, say, um, what? This is silica? Okay, let's say, uh, let's say the, the glass, say, round glass, round glass, and others are cylindrical glass, right? So the glass is general with respect to the round glass, Spirit, the cylindrical glass, glass. So all these specifics, therefore, are the general category of the glass. You're getting it. So the glass is general with respect to the specific glasses, but glass is specific with respect to the composite phenomena. But the composite phenomena it does not pervade all the composite phenomena. It pervades only to one specific composite phenomena. Okay. So the glass is glass same. Can you think of the glass is specific or general phenomenon? Depends on the context. 
is specific as well as general. In what way it is specific? Specific with respect to composite phenomena, right? This is how it is specific. Because amongst the composite phenomena, we see that it is only one part of the composite phenomena. In what way it is uh, the general with respect to one category of glass, right? So the specific category, the category of the, the, the glass. So there, there are so many glasses. Then we see that well, this is the cylindrical glass is also glass. The spherical glass is also glass. And whatever glass, they are also the glass. So the glass is in general. Now can you think of a specific object which is not general? Which is not a general. Unique. So, uh, which is unique, yeah. Huh? Tejal, is it specific or general? Tejal, huh? Tejal, with respect to human beings? Tejal, with respect to human beings? Tejal is specific, it's not general. Right? Then, Tejal is also specific? No, general? How, how general? Huh? Um, is general with respect to what? No, no, no. With respect to human beings, she becomes a specific. Because she is one of the human beings. A specific human being. What is one? No. No. Tejal is general with respect Yes, certainly not. But with all the beings, they should become specific, not general. So how can they should be a general? 2016? Yes, she is. No, that's fine. But general means she should have many specifics. Said so human beings means human beings is general. So within that, there are so, so many specifics. Zalina, Angela, Tejala, like this. There are so many specifics. What has numerous specifics is known as general, right? And what has uh, what what is one of the part of that object, that main category, that becomes specific? What has so many specifics underneath that? It is general. So so Tejal of 2016, Tejal of 2017, Tejal when she was a baby, right? So all these come under the Tejal. So Tejal is general with respect to the individual cases of Tejal, right? Yes? yes. Okay. Ajila, you have some question? Okay. Yes, Tejal? Okay, should I just, uh, the reason I was speaking about this common and uncommon uh, yeah. is because from the point of your meditative experience, mm. also you, you, we are told that when, in, when you have the non-dual experience of emptiness, mm. you experience the emptiness of all phenomena. Yes. But when you have the, I don't know. Conceptual like, experience? No, when you have the direct experience of impermanence of ah, 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 then it is impermanence of that, that phenomena. Particular you object, cannot yes. make it something common to impermanence of that's all true, That's true, that's true. So there, this this general is, now this is a separate category, right? This general is specifically characterized, now we're looking at the categorization in a different way. Uh, yes, uh, yes, but what you said is very meaningful. When you see the emptiness, non-dual experience of the emptiness of one phenomenon, you experience the non, non you have the non-dual experience of the emptiness of all phenomena, right? But when you have the direct experience of the impermanence, it is only direct experience of the impermanence of one particular object, not of all composite phenomena. Yes, that's very true. So this is, um, this is, okay, this is, though the, there's a very different question, but why is this so? Because the nature of the reality is very different. Nature of the reality. Nature of the reality, emptiness experience, and the, the, of the object, of the object, the nature of the, because of the difference in the nature of the object, right? Okay. Tejal, Tejal as a participant of Pipitao's courses, is that general or specific 
because then we can posit other people also as very good. So this is specific as well as general. How it is general is because it has so many specifics under under that. They should take part in the, the Narendra Master's course. Yesterday's they who took part in the Narendra Master's course. Today's they who take part in the Master's course. No? Like this, there's so many specifics. I was thinking more like as participant of Master's course, then that becomes a okay. and then there are so many other participants. So basically we think that, we think that they can be, okay, this is a very different topic which we may or may not touch as a part of the due to class, due to collective topics, about the specifics and the generals, right? Specifics and general. So, there are cases, there are cases, first we have to define what is specific, we have to define what is general. After defining this, generally speaking, specifics is something which comes under the category of one main umbrella which has many other specifics so that is meaning specific general means under your under your category there are so many and the divisions of characters <laughs> which belong which is of your kind right for example say say a human being human being is the so one of the specifics of the impermanent phenomenon right non-human beings, human beings, house, trees, there are so many of these which all belong to the category of the impermanence. Okay, so um, these more discussions will happen. Okay, now let's continue. 209. When a cause undergoes change, it becomes a cause of something else. Anything that undergoes change should not be called permanent. So time, time, which is believed to be, which was believed to be like the same the, uh, the permanent phenomenon, permanent and which dictates, which creates all of the phenomena. So what our Acharya uh, the Aridev is saying is that in this time, because that, because that it creates something else, it should be the cause. If there's a cause, there must be internal change happening. First moment, given rise to the second moment, to the third, then given rise to the effect. So there's a change happening inside. So, because that, it cannot be permanent. If something is permanent, it cannot be a cause. Okay, 210. A thing with a permanent cause is produced by that which has not come into being. Whatever happens by itself cannot have a cause. Okay, now, the same. If something, can you imagine, if something is a permanent, Okay, let's see. If something is, if something is, if something is, uh, say, a composite phenomenon, a composite phenomenon, a composite phenomenon, as well as permanent, a composite phenomenon, yeah, permanent, um, it should either exist eternally or it should not exist at all. Can you imagine that? Can you, if something, if some, if a composite phenomenon is permanent, if a composite phenomenon is permanent, either it should be existing eternally long, or it should not be existing at all in any time. This is one philosophical conclusion, logical conclusion, that if one can slowly come to this conclusion, this will help us clear many of the philosophical doubts. If a composite phenomenon is permanent, if a composite phenomenon is permanent, there are only two possibilities. Either, either, either it exists at, eternally at all times. It should exist at all time, or it should not exist at all in any time. Okay, so let us try to explore this. Let us try to explore this, um, this, this statement. Say, if there is a composite phenomenon, say, what is big, what exists? Can you imagine that? Can you imagine that things which exist 
things which exist should be either permanent or impermanent. Can you imagine? Impermanent. Uh, things should be either permanent or impermanent. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine something which exists, of course, which is permanent? Can you imagine? Yes. What, what examples do you have? Non-composite non space, right? Emptiness. Happiness. Okay, and then the say happiness is what? Happiness is permanent or impermanent? Impermanent. impermanent. Now can you give me some concrete things? Well, let's say, let's say I like to make another statement, which which is a very important statement, which although I already made it earlier, made it earlier, now it will be help, helpful here. Say Things are either permanent or impermanent. You agree with me or not? Besides these two, there is no third category. You agree with me or not? Yes. Now, all what we call as permanent, somehow they should be related to impermanent. Right? All what is permanent should be somehow related with impermanent phenomena. Okay, now let us first explore this. Let us first explore this, then later on we'll explore what a composite phenomena, if it is permanent, it should be either eternally existent in all times or it should be non-existent at all times, right? Okay, we explore the two things. What's the first one? This is the second one. First one. Uh, all which is permanent, <laughs> be a good listener. I will not blame you, you are a little tired, I know. Okay, and the heavy lunch? No, no. It's light lunch, right? Not heavy. Okay, so let's say, um, all what is permanent phenomena, which means that what I'm we're saying is that what exists is permanent or impermanent. Somehow what I'm trying to say is that at the, at the pyramid put upside down, Okay, let's say, pyramid put upside down, the base is at the top, the base is lying, all the phenomena, the diversity of the phenomena, right? So, they boil down to the tip. The tip is the impermanent phenomena. Okay, this is one way of understanding it. There are so many ways of understanding At the tip is the emptiness. This is another way of understanding it. What I'm explaining is, say, at the base, pyramid put upside down like this, upside down like this, so at the top is the diversity of the phenomena, permanent, impermanent, all these things. And they all boil down to the tip, which is the impermanent phenomena. Okay, this is one thing that we need to keep in mind. That finally, everything that exists in the universe, somehow we see that they are grounded on the impermanent phenomena. Okay, can you give me any example of permanent phenomena? So impermanent phenomena, they are grounded in permanence, no doubt. But a permanent phenomenon, can you give me an ex any example that you can think of of a permanent phenomenon? And let us see how they are connected with the impermanent phenomenon. What? Huh? Yes, Dejo? Uh, the, the isolate of uh, the petal of this red flower. The isolate of the, the, the red petal. The red petal of the flower. Isolate red petal of the flower. Okay. Isolate. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Putting people in un confusion unnecessarily. Okay. Isolate. Isolate has the connotation, right? Okay. Anything else? I said it's a little complicated for the time being. Anything else? Anyone else? Non-composite space. Okay. Non-composite space. Let's say non-composite space. What is non-composite space? Absence of? Absence of obstruction, which is the characteristic of the? Composite space. You're getting it? Composite space is space which we can see between, between the, the two obstructions, that space. That space is permanent, impermanent. Impermanent. It's impermanent. So this space has the characteristic. So this characteristic is characteristic of non-obstruction. 
it is simply what you see on the basis of the on the basis of the composite space on the basis of the composite space right so this is a characteristic it is associated with the composite space likewise we speak about the emptiness of the self emptiness of the self is associated with the self likewise you think of any permanent permanent phenomenon somehow they are connected with the impermanent phenomenon at the root what is really here is something concrete what is really here is impermanent phenomenon don't forget it it is on this basis if you understand this then the chitta matras philosophy is amazing same impermanent phenomena is what is really there as the substance there then on this basis then the imputed phenomena then you mentally impute non composite space emptiness the the what absence of autonomous substance self the absence of tiger just you impute all imputations and then you impute externality then you understand that externality is purely imputation it is not really there you remove this veil and then the absence of externality that becomes the thoroughly established phenomenon so impermanent phenomena then the imputed phenomena remove that then becomes the thoroughly established phenomena so this is little tangible so this is these all will um they will become very sensible when we come to know that finally what is really there something concrete there is the impermanent phenomena okay our 210 a thing with a permanent cause is produced by that which has not come into being okay now the second second part which we have to explore second part is what that if a composite phenomena is permanent it should either be either be existing at all times or should not be existing at all in any time right this is what we have to know okay let's say let's say let's say this flower this flower is a composite phenomenon or not this is a composite phenomenon say the, this composite phenomenon and it is permanent if it is composite phenomenon which is permanent then if it is composite and permanent which means that it doesn't change it should not change this has a substance and it is not changing this has a substance it doesn't change which means that if it doesn't change then no factor can change it yes no no external factors can change it if no external factor factors can change it this should not depend on any other factors yes no if this does not depend on any other factors if it doesn't depend on any other factors then no, no factor can damage it no factor can create it yes no yes. because it is independent of all other external factors if this were the case then if it exists no external force okay if it exists no external force can damage it at any time yes no which means if there is no external factor to damage it it will continue on its own endlessly so it exists eternally no and if it is non existent now if it is non existent now no external factor can change it because no external factor can change it no external factor can make it from non existent to existent so it will if it is non existent it will remain non existent forever so why with planting the seed the shoot which was non existent before can come into being because of dependency on external factors other factors with the water the seed the the the, the heat and so forth all these factors they come into being they can affect or the seed that seed is destroyed and the shoot is given rise to so this is because of the dependency so therefore for a composite for a composite phenomena if it is permanent either it should exist at all times or it should be non existent altogether with this mind 210 a thing with a permanent cause is produced by that which has not come into being whatever happens by itself cannot have a cause say 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 this flower say you plant a seed 
you plant the seed and the flower grows. Now you plant the seed and the, the proponents of the time, the proponents of the time as the proponents of the time as the ultimate creator and the time as permanent. Time is permanent, time is permanent and time is the ultimate creator. So there, say, because the time is permanent, is some is time is a composite phenomenon. It's a composite phenomenon and also permanent. If that is, if this were the case, then the time ca cannot act on other things. Cannot act on other things. If it cannot act on other things, then the flower it grows, it grows by itself. It is not produced by the the time. A thing with a permanent cause. Permanent cause here is a permanent cause. Permanent cause here is the time. A thing with a permanent cause. A thing with a permanent cause is produced by that which has not come into being. Meaning that if the time were to be permanent and to be non-existent at one point, then it should always it should always remain non-existent. A thing with a permanent cause is produced by that which has not come into being, meaning a time which was initially non-existent and then come into being. Come into being. If something is non-existent before, a composite phenomenon non-existent before, and then come into being means it is changing. A non-composite phenomena, a composite phenomena, which is unchanging means it it should be always, if it's non-existent, non-existent at one point, it should be always non-existent. If it's non-existent at one point, it will never come into being by that which has not come into being. Whatever happens by itself, then the flower, then the flower grows by itself, not by the part of its course, which is the time. Whatever happens by itself cannot have a cause, cannot have time as a cause. 211. How can that which is produced by a permanent thing be impermanent. Okay, now the cause and effect. The cause and effect, cause and effect. Say if the time is permanent and it's the cause, and the flower is the effect and the, 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 the flower is the effect and the impermanent. Right? What? The time is the cause and permanent, and the flower is the effect and impermanent. So the cause and effect, these two are not compatible. One is permanent, one is impermanent. Right? Okay. So what it says here is that the cause and effect, this should, if something is to be cause and effect, these two should be compatible. If one is impermanent, both should be impermanent. If one is permanent, both should be permanent. So why should there be the compatibility between the two, cause and effect? Anyone? In other words, let me put it like this. If the effect is per impermanent, the flower, both sides, the, say, the advocate of the time as the creator of all phenomena, and the, the, the opponent of the time, the one who rejects the time to be the creator of all phenomena. Both sides accept that the flower is impermanent. You're getting it? Now, one side says that time is the permanent and it creates the flower. And the other side says that no time is not permanent, it is not the creator of the flower. Okay, now, if you were to posit that time is not the creator of the flower, flower is created by its own, own seed and so forth. Right? And if I were to say that time is permanent and is the final creator of the flower, right? Now you reject me by saying that time is the cause and the flower is the effect. Flower is permanent, impermanent, impermanent. And I'm saying that time is permanent. So the effect is impermanent and the cause is permanent according to me. Now you are trying to reject me. You follow Ari Dev, trying to reject me, saying that cause and effect should be compatible. If the effect is permanent, impermanent, cause will also impermanent. I would say that this compatibility is not required, is not necessary. So how can you prove? Is there anyone who likes to prove that if the effect is impermanent, the cause will also impermanent? If the cause is permanent, then the effect cannot be given rise to. Anyone? No, this flower, this flower. This will vanish. This will be permanent. Yes. But the flowers will be there. It will not eradicate this all flowers. Okay, what I'm saying. Time is not for this particular flower. 
no, what I'm saying, no, what I'm saying is that finally, what is the creator, what is the creator of all phenomena is the time, right? So we are not talking about the flower in general. We are talking about these the things which are related to us, things which is related to us, which has relevance to us. The flower in general, which has no relevance to me, has no effect. The flower has the capacity to make me happy, and the bad things have the capacity to make me unhappy. So these things, who create these things? This is the question, right? It is something, philosophy, related to one's day-to-day -day life and the purpose of the, the meaning of life. Okay, for this, anyone who likes to give the answer? If the effect is impermanent, the cause as well should be impermanent. How? Puja? Two points. First is like it's logical that for effect to arise, the cause has to disintegrate. Uh, I may not agree with this. And the second point is it will have an absurd consequence that at the time at the pre at the time of the effect, cause will also be there because it is permanent. So there are no more cause and effect if they are present at the same time. Why not? Because. Because cause and effect makes sense when effect is there, cause This is, is from not your point of view. This is your Buddhist point of view. So cause and effect can be there. This clear. is not the reality. This is your point of view. Okay. So they say that cause and effect... No, it's the reality. Then the cause and effect can be simultaneous. The cause is permanent, it gives rise to the impermanent result, and the cause continues. As a cause? Yes. Or As a cause of the next, not next object. Finish. Okay. But then it's not the cause of the same object. No, it's already the cause. So the purpose is done. So now, after giving rise to effect, then it disintegrates. Which one? The cause? Yes. No. Cause in the form of time. No, this is your point of view. No, no, because then, for example, let's say you the, say. The <laughs> time is cause, time is permanent, it exists eternally. eternally. Right? It gives rise to the first flower. And the first flower may disintegrate, it doesn't matter. It gives rise to the second flower. Mm -hmm. It gives rise to the third flower and so forth. So it continues as a cause yes. of the flower I'm asking. Yes, yes. Then it's not the cause of the table then. No, it is the cause of everything. So when it's cause of the table, it is the cause of the flower, flower also. also. Yes, because what is creating table here is creating flower somewhere else. <laughs> Same time. <laughs> Same time, different time, both. <laughs> what I'm good. Uh, there are uh, two points uh, which you mentioned. One is that uh, how is a permanent thing be uh, an effect of something impermanent? Another thing is if, uh, for an impermanent effect, we have to show that its causes should also be impermanent. For an impermanent effect? Cause will also be impermanent. impermanent. So how can you say this? So uh, for an effect, if it, an impermanent effect, it means it was not earlier there, it has arisen. Yes. So uh, for something to arise, it means something has to undergo change to give rise to effect. How? Because the effect was earlier not seen. Yes. And, and its cause, unless it transforms, something transforms, not necessary. But then it will not be causally, uh, yeah. if, if something is cause, if, if something is cause, without what, how would otherwise as an effect come into being? Uh, huh? Because if an effect is impermanent, it was not there earlier. So the cause, all, all its causes, something has to transform its cause, unless it transforms into the effect. It, otherwise it could already be present. So the sea transformed. Time does not transform. Yes, yes, I am saying. So the time did not change. So in the so okay, the other thing is something is permanent in the case of time. For it to play role uh, of a cause. Yes. It has to somehow effect. Well, cause some. It has to somehow, in some way, play a part in rising of the effect. Yes, yes, yes. So because being permanent. It cannot play any kind of role. How? Because being permanent, it cannot affect anything else, neither can anything else affect it. How? Because to cause to affect anything else, 
it has to undergo change. Uh, what makes you think that? Because uh, it is inert. Uh, it is perfect. Because without changing its nature, it cannot uh, cause any kind of effect on anything else. How? So this is your Buddhist view. Okay. In fact, the best thing you'd like to try? I like yes, yes. Um, so if we say the time as a creator, Yes. So let's take example the seed growing into a shoot. Yes. Simple. So the time creator of the seed, I'll have to posit time as a creator on the dependence on the seed. Then time, the next moment, let's say the shoot comes out. Yes. Then the time on the basis of the shoot. So there is, even if I posit permanence, there is an interdependence. Between? Between time and the phenomena and the time. No. Because otherwise, how would you say that if if anybody posits time as a creator, my counter question would be, what is it creating? So they would probably say it created the seed. Then the time. No, no, it creates the seed, it creates the shoot, it creates the fruit, everything. Yes, yes, yes. yes. I, it creates everything. Yeah, I understand their point of view. And, but. How can they posit something on its own, like absolute time? All I'm saying is that even if they posit time as a permanent thing, it is dependent on the phenomena which is no, no. directly... This is your view. The time dependent on the phenomena, say the, the time associated with the glass is dependent on the phenomena. This is your view. Otherwise, how would you posit? Like if, if, posit if, they, what? if they say time is the creator of the seed, you have to qualify the seed in that creation. Of course. So creator without the creation does not make sense. Creator without the creation? Does not make sense. Why not? If there was no creation, how can anybody posit time as the no, creator? The creation is there, but the yes, creation will come later. I agree. Not simultaneous. I, I agree to that, but uh, I mean, a few stanzas back where it said that if anything is a defect, it necessarily came from the cause. And the cause, the unique Prasangika point of view. That the cause. I don't is, care about Prasangika point of view. I'm just trying to. I, at this stage, I would also agree, but I'm just trying to say that in the previous stanza, the point I'm trying to, the concept I'm trying to articulate is that. The effect does not make sense without the cause and vice versa. The cause does not make a sense without the effect. Same way, the time as a creator does not make a sense if they posit time as a creator without the creation. The creation is there. So the moment you say that if you qualify with the creation, then it doesn't remain permanent. That's a contradiction. How? Because time as a creator, you can only posit based on the creation. And they would also agree the creation is changing. The seed is changing into the shoe. So time as a creator is changing. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Okay, now good. So these these are the exercises that we have to go through. These are exercises that we have to go through. And um, if we can acquire the skill of being able to articulate, articulate the the loopholes of these positions, then we will take this habit, this tendency of the sharpness of the mind to our next life. And the, the next lives, then say, you may come across any kind of teaching, something to do with emptiness, you become very excited, something to solidify, there's something objective which isn't there, you feel uncomfortable, these things happen. In fact, even in the history of the humanity, we see that there were many case, such cases of the, even the youngsters, very young children, for example, Achar Dignaga was a perfect example of such a young boy who was taught a philosophical point at such a young age and he was totally against that. At such a young age, he, um, as a young boy, he, he could not fight with his teacher. So therefore he was totally against and then at such a tender age he was displaying ways and means by which to say that I don't agree with this philosophy. So this is all because of the habituation of these talents from the past life. This is so precious, so precious. Okay, so now let's see what Arya Deva, how Arya Deva possesses the, the point. 
Um, okay, let's say two, um, two, one, one. How can that which is produced by a permanent thing be an permanent thing? Meaning, how how can that which is produced, which is produces the effect, by a permanent thing, by meaning a cause, by a cause which is permanent, thing be impermanent, meaning cause is permanent and the effect is impermanent. How can this be true? Never are the two which do cause and effect seem to have compatible incompatible characteristics, meaning the cause is permanent and effect is impermanent. These two are very incompatible. Right? So now how can we how can we say that how can we say that such incompatible characteristics cannot be assumed by the cause effect to things? Okay, let's see. Two one two. That of which some sides are causes, while other sides are not, is thereby multifarious. How can that which is multifarious be permanent? This is a brilliant, brilliant reasoning. Okay, let's say, let's say, let's say time as a permanent, be permanent. Time is permanent as a cause, and it gives rise to an effect, right? And the effect is impermanent. Now, if the time, which the, the, the cause, which is time, is permanent, say, let's say, time means should have a, should have a beginning event and the end so this gap is the time so this time let's say um, the 2016 let's say 2016 let's say given time given time now given and say 2016 let's say just say 2016 is the cause and the 2017 tree growing 2017 tree growing is the impermanent phenomenon given rise to by the, uh, the 2016 time as a cause so say they say that that is the cause time is cause is permanent and the 2017 tree growing is impermanent as the effect okay now are they are they are they what he's saying is that 2016 within that because it is a time it should have a beginning middle and end yes no even though the beginning, middle, end, they may be permanent. It doesn't matter. Still, because it is a time, they should have three, three things. Beginning, middle, and end. They should be three things, right? Now, within that, within that time span, there's one portion which is closer to the effect. One portion which is further away from the effect, right? So, further away from the effect should slowly change into the closer towards the effect. So without the change, further away from the effect will always remain further away from the effect. If it will always remain further away from the effect, it will never be the immediate cause of the effect. Without the immediate cause of the effect, the effect will never come into being. You're getting it? Right? Let me say this again. Okay, 2016. How many months 2016? First, let me make it very simple. And then later on, when the actual debaters come, it is your responsibility. Right? First, let me make it very simple. 1940, 1950, around that time, there was one great, great Tibetan intellect. Some of you familiar? His name is Gendin Chambel. Gendin Chambel, incredibly great intellect, a brilliant thinker, a brilliant thinker. What he said was, what he said was that, that in the text which we study, in the text, the opponents were so easily rejected. Then he said, because he went to India himself, he came to India, he came to India and actually saw the vibrant philosophical positions here, which were all rejected in Tibet in the Tibetan Buddhist text in Tibet where the actual opponents were missing. So he said that if we try to employ the same reasoning and so forth to reject the opponents, if we actually meet with the opponents, whether or not we can reject is questionable. This is what he said. 
He's so, he was so brilliant, so sharp, amazingly. He wrote one book, I don't know whether there is available in English, but he wrote one book, is about saying the unemptiness, rejection of the view of emptiness, the conventional view of emptiness. Um, it's a brilliant book. I don't know whether it's available in English, I don't know. Okay, so he said that. So now our job is first learn how the logic works, and then in future, if you do happen, if not in this life, in your next lives, if you do happen with the encounter with the people who really posit such a philosophy that time is the creator of all phenomena, you should be able to reject them, right? In this life, you may not meet. In next lives, At the moment, at the moment, when you meet people, they are more flexible, sympathetic, you know, because they don't take them as one's view, right? They may, okay, this is what I think, and then you reject it, they easily give up. But in those days, really struggling, my tradition, your tradition, like this, right? And then, in this life, we may not encounter with such people anymore. In the next class, if you do, prepare, be prepared. <laughs> be prepared. Okay, now without, first let's continue with this. How that is done, let me say. Okay, first let me put it in a simple way. And the actual difficulty one, then you take the charge. Okay. In a simple way, let's say time as the cause which is permanent, if it does exist. At the 2017 tree growing, that is the effect which is impermanent. And time, 2016 per se, is the cause of this and is permanent. If this is how opponents take, then we see that effect. What's the effect? The impermanent What's the effect? Impermanent tree growing of 2017. The tree. What is the cause? 2016 as the time. 2016 as the time and permanent entity. That's the cause. And the effect is the impermanent tree of 2017 growing. So this is effect. So we see that the effect is impermanent and the cause is permanent. Okay. Now they were saying that these two are incompatible. So for the cause and effect, if one is <coughs> impermanent, other should be impermanent. If one is permanent, other should be permanent. So they cannot the incompatibility should not be there with the cause effect relationship. So the question which I ask you is why is it not possible that if the the effect is impermanent, the cause should be cause can be permanent? Why is it not possible? This is the question asked. So he's now given the answer, saying that 2016 is time. Time means there should be a gap, a span of time. Without a span of time, it's not a time. So gap. Gap means there should be earlier moments, middle moment and the later moments, right? So within 2016, we see the earlier moments, the middle moment, and the later moments. And the later moments are closer towards the 2017, or the <coughs> earlier moments of 2016 are closer towards 2017. Later moments are closer towards 2017, right? Now, the January of 2016 is the earlier moment. That changes to February 2016, changes to March, April, May, June, July, September. August, September, October, November. November, and then November then changes to December. Then December gives rise to 2017 tree, impermanent tree growing, right? Okay, so we see that within 2016 is a time, within that, because it is made, it is, it is constituted of gap, a span of time gap. Within that, there is one portion which is closer towards the, closer towards the 2017 tree growing, and one portion which is further away from 2017 tree growing. One portion which is closer, one portion which is further away. Now, the fact that within that there are two things: one is closer, one is further away, means they should be changed. There should be change. If there is no change, 
then what is further away will, should always remain further away. If it will always remain further away, it will never become the closer. If it will never become closer, it will never be connected to 2017. If it's never connected to 2017, 2017 will never arise. So therefore, from this we see that the time, only by changing the time, then the next moment, 2017, impermanent phenomenal growing can come into being. Okay, let's see. 2012. That of which some sides are causes, meaning 2016, the closer ones. Closer ones towards the 2017 are the causes, while other side to the January, February, further away, they are not, they are not, is thereby multifarious. The time 2016 is multifarious. It has numerous facets, numerous parts, multifarious. How can that which is multifarious be permanent? Multifarious means, multifarious means, for example, say, Say, um, say this hall. This hall. Some are tree wood color. Some are white color. Some are tanga. They're multifarious, but they are all simultaneous, right? With the three di dimension, multi being multifarious can be simultaneous, but in time, multifarious cannot be simultaneous. It should be sequential. If sequential, only with change. You can explain how things are multifarious in time, only with change. Without change, you cannot explain how things can be multifarious. Okay, how can that which is multifarious be permanent? How can which is multifarious, meaning if one part which is close, further away, which is not a cause, direct cause of 2017, one part which is direct cause of 2017, these two are very different. These two are very different. And these two exist in time, not simultaneous, in different times. So different times, these two are very different, and different times mean they should undergo change. The first one did not remain the same, it changed. If it changes, then it is impermanent. Okay, this is, these reasonings, if we learn, if we learn, okay, uh, all of us have the experience, in a school, in a school, in your classroom, some of the, the boys, girls, they are so sharp. When the teacher teaches about physics, mathematics, right? They are very sharp. They are so quick to pick up things. Yes, you agree? And some are not as sharp. So why some are sharp and some are not sharp? For sure, there are so many factors. One of the major factors is habituation to these kind of thoughts in the past lives. When you have habituated to these thoughts, these thinking, in the past lives, the next half you become very sharp automatically. Right? So this is so important. Yes, Badriji. <coughs> um, I, I I've been having problems understanding the very notion of impermanence. Um, while these arguments are about whether there is an external agent which is permanent, which is causing impermanence, I'm having problems understanding impermanence without having a notion of permanence in the background. For instance, if we say things are impermanent, one is implying that things are continually impermanent. And continuity is, again, it's permanence. Continuity implies permanence. <laughs> Similarly, one cannot think of impermanence without having the notion of its opposite, which is permanence. So while we may not able we not we may not be able to identify an agent which is permanent, but there is an idea of permanence which gives rise to the idea of impermanence. Okay, let's say the let's say um, the two things. The one is the continue the continuity to be permanent other one is to speak about impermanence the counterpart the permanence okay it is not necessary in a thought in a thought we should have both in reality they both may not be there for example say emptiness of objective existence or say dependent origination was objective dependent origination independent origination 
right? So dependent origination exists, which means everything that exists should be dependent originated. And if dependent origination to make, to make sense, if you need the counterpart, then the independent existence should exist, which is totally bizarre. Because we already said that everything exists as, as dependent originated, right? So it is not necessary. But in that thought, to understand what is dependent origination, we need to know, we need to have understa the understanding as to what if something exists independently, what it should be like. If you know this, and then when you reject this on the things, then you understand dependent origin so well. So in reality, one thing is on the reality, what is in your thought. In your thought, the two sides should be there, but in reality, one side is good enough. It's not necessary for the two things to be there. Now to continue, continue, this is a very good question. Let's say the flower changes. The first flower, one of the flower, well not only the flower, each one of us will be like flowers. How many of us we think that we are like flowers? We are all like flowers, 100%, right? Same, from time of birth till today, each one of us, we are the oldest. From time of birth till today, each of us, we are the oldest. It's quite demoralizing. But from what we are now, till you are dead, you are the youngest today. The time you have in your hand, the time you have in your hand, you are the youngest today. The time slipped by, you are the oldest one. Time gone, you are the oldest one. Time you have in your hand, you are the youngest today. You're getting it? Okay. So, till birth, till now, till death. So there's a continuum. So this continuum must last. Although within that, there's momentariness. The young girl, then the what? The teenage. Adolescent, then adult, then grow older like this. But say the girl name what girl name B continues for like say eighty years, ninety years, continues for ninety years, right? This continuum. So this continuum is permanent. This one question. But in actuality, even this continuum is also impermanent. Okay, one thing. Given that all composite things are impermanent, given that all composite things are impermanent, things, meaning composite phenomena, they exist only in the form of continuum. Only in the form of continuum. Without the continuum, no composite phenomena exists. You getting it? Okay, so the composite phenomena, when you speak, you speak about continuum, the continuum is permanent, impermanent, see if you sense a continuum, do you see that it's permanent or impermanent? Continuum means continuum with the person from the young to the old. Continuum. When you see the continuum, if you want to see this 90 years, 90 years of time in one minute, if you are to, what do you call it? Compress time lapse. No, compress the movies, what, fast forward. Into it makes it short. short time lapse. Okay, yeah, like yeah, let's say time lapse. Time lapse meaning to make the collapse. span of time collapse that into shorter time, right? Time lapse. Let's say time lapse. Say eighty years, you collapse it into three minutes, right? You see the continuum of eighty years, continuum lasting for eighty years. You are seeing this in. Three minutes. Tell me, when you see this continuum, you see this as static or you see that? What do you see? Change, change. change. This is impermanence. So the continuum, if you don't really imagine what this continuum is like, then we just philosophically, hypothetically, we have the feeling that, oh, continuum is forever lasting. But impermanence, permanence, something, you experience it, you see that it's changing. You see this static. For example, you look at it, or particularly, you look at this pen here. Do you see it changing, or you see it unchanging? Unchanged. Unchanged. You're getting it. You're, you're getting it. This pen. This pen. This pen. I'm not asking how does it, whether it exists, whether it changes, or not. This is not my question. My question: How does it appear to you? 
our misperception has it that it appears as that day. You getting it? But the continuum, if we crunch it, time lapse, then we see that it really moves so far. It's very scary. It's very scary, right? Okay. So, um, okay. Now let's uh, two one two. That of which some signs are causes, while other signs are not, is thereby multifarious. How can that which is multifarious be permanent? Okay, we'll stop here. Okay, quick interaction prayer. Then we have the movie screening of the Buddha's Dangela. What's the screening? What screening is that? Buddha episodes. Okay, um, let's turn to page three zero nine. With a wish to free all beings, I shall always go for refuge to the Buddha, Dharma, and Sangha until I reach full enlightenment. Inspired by wisdom and compassion, today in the Buddha's presence, I journey to the mind of full awakening for the benefit of all sentient beings. I go for refuge to the triple gem, I confess the negativities individually, I rejoice in the virtues of all the beings, I hold the precious Buddha in my heart. As long as space remains, as long as sentient beings remain, until then may I too remain to dispel the miseries of the world. A part of union of emptiness and compassion is loosely explained by the protector of the Dharma and the beings of the snow land, where the lotus holder tends in Yasu, we subjugate you that your wishes are fulfilled spontaneously. May the operations of evil thoughts and deeds of the negative forces of humans or non-humans who have been managed through perverted prayers against the teachings of the Buddhas be truly vanquished through the part of the truth of the three jewels. Throughout my future lifetimes, may I always be guided by Adam and Jushri and be able to uphold the Dharma in general and the teachings on dependent origination in particular, even in the cosmic life. Okay, see you later.